Hey guys, for those of you who saw in the last video, you got to see a little bit of this uh, shotgun. Today I'm going to give you a closer look at my Keltec KS7 12 gauge pump action shotgun. This is the Keltec KS7 12 gauge pump action bullpup shotgun. This is my favorite weapon to date uh, of all the weapons that I've ever held in my life. Here's a little brief overview of everything that I've done to it and some of the stats. Uh, so starting at the end, I got the extended butt pad, the kel extended butt pad. You can see that it has the kel logo on it. It replaces the stock butt pad. It's got about a half an inch of extra padding back there uh, to mitigate some of the uh, recoil, some of the kick. Uh, because it, for a 26 inch shotgun, uh, this does kick. Uh, it kicks quite a bit. It's not too bad though. Uh, I, I have to say it kicks a little bit harder than the Landor, but it's not terrible. You know, I've heard a lot of people complain about the kick, and I have not found it to be that bad. Uh, but the extended butt pad definitely, definitely helps. Uh, in front of that is, this is the M Carbo Cheek Protector. Uh, it is just an adhesive pad that goes over the goes over the top of the of the cheek well back here. Uh, has a little window for your uh, for your uh, your serial number, um, and uh, that's about a quarter of an inch of padding back there. Um, and you definitely need it because um, your cheek will take a beating shooting this for an extended period of time. I assure you. To um, go over the top of that, I got the high tech uh, cheek protector, which goes over the cheek well, uh, and in this case also goes over the M Carbo pad. Just gives it a little bit of extra padding. Also serves as a shell holder. Um, has uh, Velcro on it. You can install the shells on either side, whether you're a righty or a lefty. Uh, gives you eight extra shells available right there and take it off put it on however you however you want to do it um, in front of that is again another M Carbo piece this is the M Carbo uh, single point sling attachment uh, takes the place of uh, one of your takedown pins you can install it in the front or the back uh, Takes the place of one of your takedown pins, uh, installs with a uh, Allen key, and rotates. It has a washer there, so it rotates, um, so it doesn't bind or anything. Single point sling attachment. Okay. Okay. In front of that is just simply the uh, pistol grip plug. Um, just keeps dirt and grime and stuff like that out of the you know the pistol grip um, also on the way is the M Carbo spring kit and aluminum trigger uh, the spring kit uh, supposedly drops the trigger pull down to about three pounds it's about seven pounds now uh, which is nice and comfortable but uh, I'd rather go with the three pounds if I could get it and uh, replaces the original plastic trigger with an aluminum trigger. Um, so that's on the way. Okay, so the next thing I did was I removed the carry handle uh, and I did that because I wasn't real happy with the sights that were on the carry handle. The carry handle was cool and all, but I really wanted some better optics. So I went, there are two basic options that you can you can go with. High Tech makes a Picatinny rail that pretty much goes the entire length um, of your of your your top tube. Um, Keltec also makes uh, the Picatinny rail uh, package, uh, but instead uh, Keltec has the shortened Picatinny rail with a um, with a, a heat guard. Um, because that tube underneath gets gets hot. So the heat shield uh, protects you from the heat of the tube, obviously. 
um, and then the shorter Picatinny rail. Uh, I chose to go with that. Um, I just, I like the looks of it better. I kind of like the functionality of it better. And it was about half the price of the, uh, of the high tech. So uh, it was about $50 for the, uh, for the Keltec Picatinny rail uh, setup. On top of the Picatinny rail, I got the same optics that I got for the Landor. This is the Hiram uh, red or green dot uh, 1x30 optics uh, with uh, green laser. Uh, I like the way that it uh, performed with the uh, Landor. Uh, so I just decided to get one for the KS7 as well, uh, which is great because then when we do the uh, comparison, the side-by-side -side comparison, the real one on Friday, uh, the optics will be the same, so that won't be an issue. Uh, in front of that, I have a 1000 lumen uh, tactical flashlight on a 45 degree angled uh, holder so that it's out of the way of the optics. At the very front is the muzzle brake. Uh, there are a couple different muzzle brakes that you can get for the KS7. I chose this one. I like the looks of this one the best. So the KS7 stock is 26 inches from butt to muzzle. Um, with the additions, it's about 28 and a quarter um, from the tip of the muzzle brake to the back of the extended butt pad. Now, I have been waiting over a year for this KS7. Um, I knew when I first saw it that I was gonna love this weapon. One of the things that I really love about this weapon is the variety of ammunition that it will cycle and fire. Um, I don't know if you can see this, maybe I can zoom in when I do the editing but this says 12 gauge, three inch. Now this will hold uh, six three inch, 12 gauge shells, uh, and then one in the, one in the chamber. Um, I fire, uh, this is what I shoot. I shoot two and three quarter inch, this is buckshot. Uh, but generally, especially because of the Landor, I shoot two and three quarter inch um, shells and uh, it cycles and fires two and three quarter inch shells just fine. Birdshot, buckshot, slug, doesn't matter. But the real reason why I knew I was gonna love this is because it fires these. It will cycle and fire these. Uh, this is the one and three quarter inch mini shell. Now there are a few companies that make this. This is actually a buckshot mini shell uh, which contains seven 4B and four 1B projectiles. Which of course is not, you know, it's not a, a massive load or anything like that, but it'll get the job done for sure. Uh, this weapon will cycle and fire these all day long. And I love the mini shells. I like the compact size. Uh, this will hold 11 of these. Um, and like I said, it cycles and fires them with no issues whatsoever. If you watched the last video, last video was not really a fair comparison. Um, uh, it wasn't scientific at all. We were just having fun. This Friday, we're going to do a little bit more fair, uh, more scientific based comparison. Uh, last week, uh, the Landor was shooting two and three quarter inch shells, and this was shooting mini shells. This week, we're going to only shoot two and three quarter inch shells. Uh, we're going to sight both of them in. We're going to do an accuracy uh, experiment to see which one is the most accurate. And then we're gonna do a speed accuracy experiment. Reason for that is some people might say that the semi-automatic status of the Landor will make it a faster uh, shooting weapon. I don't believe that's true. The reason being is the kick is such that 
you have to re-engage your target after every time you pull the trigger and that takes a second i believe that this you can cycle your next round by the time that you have reacquired your target so i think that this will be equal to if not faster than the landor uh, but we'll see because we're going to do that experiment on friday so uh, be on the lookout for that and i'll see you next time